face brand, here's a secret about me. I don't drink very often, but when I do, I'm a massive lightweight. I figure the safe and responsible thing to do as this ship's captain is to lock myself out of the ship controls if my head isn't clear enough to operate it. We're going to do that using an alcohol sensor and a touch sensor, both of which typically come in basic sensor kits. The MQ-3 alcohol sensor is a four-pin heat-driven gas sensor module. It detects gases like alcohol or ethanol and can also be used to detect smoke. It has a high sensitivity and it outputs a digital or an analog value based on the alcohol concentration. It detects alcohol concentrations ranging between 25 to 500 ppm or parts per million. ppm is the ratio of one gas to another and is a common measuring unit for gas concentration. A 500 ppm would translate to if you counted up a million gas molecules, 500 of them would be alcohol and the remaining would be other gases. The sensor is covered with two layers of stainless steel mesh called an anti-explosion network. This is to make sure that the sensor doesn't cause an explosion since it's going to be sensing highly flammable gases. The mesh also filters out non-gaseous particles. The MQ-3 needs time to warm up in order for it to be accurate, potentially 24 to 48 hours if it hasn't been used in a while. If it has been used recently, it may be as fast as 30 seconds or it could take 5 to 10 minutes to fully warm up. The module does get warm to the touch as it's heating up, so don't panic if you feel that. But if it starts feeling too warm, maybe panic a little and check your wiring. The module includes a potentiometer to adjust the sensitivity, a power LED that lights up when the module is turned on, and a status LED that lights up when the alcohol concentration goes over the threshold value. The module has four pins, VCC, ground, D0, and A0. D0 indicates the presence of alcohol. It reads low when the alcohol concentration exceeds the threshold value, which is set by the potentiometer. A0 outputs an analog voltage that's proportionate to the alcohol concentration. The higher the concentration, the higher the output voltage. A touch sensor is pretty similar to a push button and it works like a switch. When there's contact or pressure on it, an electrical circuit is completed and a current can flow through. The signal pin outputs low when it's not being touched and high when it is. Touch sensors are pretty straightforward, so the first project we're going to do is just to see how the alcohol sensor works. We can use this sensor to detect if there's any alcohol clouds around us. There really is a giant cloud of alcohol about 6,500 light years from Earth in a region called W3OH. It has a little bit of ethyl alcohol in it, but it's mostly made of methyl alcohol. According to phys.org, there is some really cool astrophysics happening with it. Because of the abundance of similar simple molecules, adding a bit of energy to the mix can lead to a stimulated emission of light known as an astrophysical maser. This stands for Microwave Amplication by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. When this happens with visible light, we call it a laser. Triggering an astrophysical maser requires the right conditions. You need a type of molecule with strong emission lines, such as methyl alcohol molecules. You also need them to be fairly concentrated so that stimulated photons can hit other molecules to cause a cascade. These conditions are perfect in a methyl alcohol cloud. You also need an energy source like protostars while they're heating up. Good old W3OH has the exact conditions because the methyl cloud is surrounding a stellar nursery. We first invented masers in the 1950s and thought they were completely human created. But now, thanks to this region of space with a methyl cloud, we know that they're actually a natural occurrence. Okay, we should stop geeking out about space and return to work. We're going to do two projects, one just to see how the alcohol sensor works, and then in the second one, we'll add in the touch sensor. We need nine jumper wires, seven of them male to female, the touch sensor, the alcohol sensor, and the breadboard. Connect VCC to the positive sign on the power rail, ground to the negative sign on the power rail, A0 on the sensor to A0 on the Arduino, and D0 to pin 2. For the touch sensor, do the same thing with the VCC and ground pins, and connect the S pin to pin 7 on the Arduino. Finally, connect a jumper wire from the positive sign on the power rail to 5V and one from the negative sign to ground. Alcohol A is the analog pin and alcohol D is the digital pin. We are going to set those to A0 and 2 and then set them both as inputs, as well as turn on the serial monitor. Under void loop, we're reading in the state of both of those pins and then setting them to an alcohol dig and an alcohol and variable. Then we're just going to print out both of those values. When there's no alcohol present, the analog value hangs out around 225. As for the digital value, it's going to read low or zero when the alcohol concentration exceeds the threshold value. So we're starting off with analog readings in the 200s and a digital reading of 1. Let's test the sensor using some isopropyl alcohol. The analog values really quickly jump into the 800s and the digital value changes to zero. If we want to adjust the threshold for what the sensor considers too much alcohol, then we can just change the potentiometer. 
the red light will come on when the threshold has been exceeded. Now that we know how the sensor works and we have our threshold values, let's be responsible ship captains and add a touch sensor in. Here's the code for our prototype. So we've made a few additions to the same code to add in a touch sensor. The variable to link it to pin 7, setting the pin mode as input, and then reading in the touch state within the loop. Then we've added in this if-else statement. Since low 200s are completely sober, I have set the too drunk to fly number as 400. If we've hit that value and we're touching the touch sensor, then the serial monitor is going to let us know we've been locked out of the ship controls. Otherwise, it's just going to print out the digital and analog values like before. So with no alcohol detected, we're still in the high 100s or low 200s and the digital value is a 1. We can touch the touch sensor. Nothing will happen because we're still very sober. Then if we add in the alcohol again, we jump up to over 800, the digital value is a zero, but we're still good. We're not touching anything. Touch the touch sensor, and now we're in trouble. Well, I would call that a very adult and responsible project to check off of our to-do list. But unprofessional space pirate, you say, what if there's an emergency and we've locked ourselves out of the ship controls? Well, to that, I say, that's a problem for future us.